Now this is your great one, isn't it? It bothered me somewhat that I haven't actually showed any evidence that the water from the Tongati pipeline spout actually reaches the dam. This was a matter of dispute in the newspapers and subsequently in the public eye, and it was claimed that the water got absorbed before it actually reaches the dam. At an output of often up to 92 liters per second, we expected the water to be of sufficient flow to reach the dam, even though the distance was about 1.2 kilometers or so from the pipeline's outlet. So I took on another trip to the dam. If we watch all of this, I will do some calculations towards the end that is based on what we will observe and what we know. A big event was in progress at the Hazelmere Dam Leisure Resort. It caught me by surprise, but it fits nicely with what I was doing. I will talk about it a little later. And while I was there, I thought of attempting to cross the Mshloti River, which was not really too deep. I gave up on that idea after I discovered during my attempt that the mud was like sludge and that I was going to sink into this rubbish. The goal was to cross the river and then to walk around the perimeter of the dam to go and see where the inflow of, was of the water that comes into the dam from the Tongati pipeline outflow. I was not exactly sure how this materializes. On the 15th of July 2015, the volume of the dam is at 26.64% of its full capacity. It's a full percentage down from our visit on the 6th. No more rain occurred, but at least the previous heavy rain in the coastal area seems to have boosted the Utongati River enough that sustainable flow of water could be extracted and pumped from it. Okay, so I'm back on the road again. It was straight to plan B, and that was to try to get to a point close enough to the inflow of the dam. Are you getting my point? At least such that I could get a view of it. I had something in mind, but I was not too sure how much bureaucracy I would or may have to face in the process. The only way to know was to try and see what happens. I had to go all around again and then get onto the Vincent Dickinson Road towards Ndwedwe and then turn off into this gravel road. Arriving at this point with a car that was sensitive to gravel roads, I decided to stop at a place where I may still be able to turn around. Why do you want to turn around? The spot also appears to have been the place of a crime scene. The remains of a fire and cable sleeves indicated that this was the working place of cable thieves. Painful to see this. I suspect it was part of the communications cable that fed the equipment that is visible on the water tower behind me. In any case, I got my equipment ready to photograph the scene below. No internet for you, man! Visible from my spot was the white McKee tent that was used at the event that I talked about just now. According to the North Coast Courier and the SABC News Channel, it was a major draft by the Water and Sanitation Minister Nomvula Mokonyane to inform the public about the water crisis, while she also carried out a fact-finding mission to gather all the facts and to see for herself what the dire situation was around the Hazelmere Dam, as well as in the rest of KwaZulu-Natal. It appears that most or all of the mayors of the municipalities of the affected areas were present as well. Security was tight and police were present in full force and they were supported by intelligence personnel. I'm undercover. Back to the dam view. At the left, far behind, the Mshloti River is entering the dam. It's basically just a stream at present, but at least it is flowing. 
We will visit it again quickly later to look at the flow today. The dam wall is behind the hill on which we are and the dam curves around the left around this hill. Towards the right below is where we expect the stream from the Tongati pipeline to enter the dam. There appears to be two possible flows. The furthest look moist as if it had supported flow recently, but not much is happening there at this moment. You're right. I mean to your right. Then, by careful scrutiny, we see that there's a little stream that is coming in, in the little ravine that is closest to us. It looks insignificant, but under the zoom lens we quickly establish that it is comparable to the outflow of the pipeline. In the context of the dam it looks so tiny, but we have to appreciate that every bit helps. Mathematically spoken, when everything is measured, it makes a whole lot of sense. If this represents 20% of the daily consumption from a dam, it means that we get an extra day of water every fifth day that we otherwise would not have existed. I honestly, and it is just between you and me, believe that more water is coming in through the Mshloti River. We will discuss it again later, but just look quickly and see the movement of water there. Now that we have seen the inflow here below, it makes sense to drive to the outflow of the pipeline again, just to confirm at what rate it is coming in, so that we can make comparisons. You stream video. Drag out that zoom, man! Once again I have a quick look at the damage that was done to the stolen cable. The damage to the economy is enormous due to this kind of theft and offsets the little copper that can be retrieved from these cables by far. Communications get disrupted and it is a major work to restore it again. It is effectively sabotage and an act of terrorism. The water tower stand solitary against the hill and its top is framed with all sorts of antennas to distribute signals into the hilly areas in the vicinity to make things like cellular communications possible, for instance. Scandalous gives a new meaning to the term wireless. It's time to pack up and move again. Shout! Shout! We back at the spout! At the outlet it is immediately clear that the outflow is equally as strong as on my first visit on the 9th of July and we can just estimate it at about 8 million liters a day or roughly 90 liters per second. It rushes through the forest after the fall down and has plenty of momentum as it negotiates the slope to the dam. The inflow that we witnessed earlier is about 1.2 kilometers down here from here. Now we have to get back to the Hazelmere Resort to have a quick look at the Mshloti River. The late afternoon sun and the ample sounds of nature, the stream and the birds in the area makes for a wonderful tranquil atmosphere at this lovely resort. The river is flowing nicely as well, relatively speaking. One way to get an estimate of how fast the stream is flowing is to look at how fast objects that float on top goes with it. If there is no wind around, such as now, this would make for a rough way to get a gut feeling of the speed of the stream. The stream is not flowing very deep here and it is straight which means the bed is evenly spread. The water is clear enough to see that. Now watch the stick that comes past on this shot where we look at the river right in front of us. Use the two green grassy plants as reference and count crocodile one as it passes and see how far it gets in that time. The distance between these two plants is about 1.5 meters, 
We don't care about super accuracy and being compensated. The stream is at least 2.5 meters wide. At a minimum depth of at least 25 centimeters, the stick seems to travel at least 0.5 meters per second. 2.5 times 0.25 times 0.5 equals 0.31 cubic meters per second, which is 310 liters per second. If we add the 90 liters per second that comes in from the pipeline, we have at least 400 liters per second coming into the dam. We err on the side of safety, if you didn't follow me. The consumer consumption was at one stage apparently limited to 500 liters per second. Do you still want me to follow you? According to the North Coast Courier of October 29, 2014, Mgeni Water CEO Mr. Cyril Kamede was speaking at the presentation of the Mgeni Water Annual Report on Wednesday, October 22, 2014 at the Hilton Hotel in Durban and he said the following, quote, The Hazelmere Dam currently sits on 45.7% and the daily average production, which is the amount of water released from the dam, has been restricted to 43 megalitres per day from the normal production of 54 megalitres per day, unquote. This gives us a ballpark from which to do some scenario calculations of our own. 43 megalitres of water per day is 497 litres per second. 54 megalitres of water per day is 625 litres per second. The capacity of the Hazelmere Dam is 17.9 million cubic metres, which is 17,900 million litres. 1% 1 of full capacity is 179 million litres. 1% or 179 million litres at 625 litres per second is used in 286,000 seconds, which are 79.55 hours, which are 3.31 days. 1% 1 or 179 million litres at 497 litres per second is used in 360,000 seconds, which are 100 hours, which are 4.16 days. To stretch 1%, 179 million litres over seven days and assuming no inflow into the dam implies that we can't extract more than 179 million litres, which is 296 litres per second. Add to this the approximate 400 litres per second that seems to be coming into the dam and we have 696 litres per second available to limit extraction to 1% every seven days. Losses also occur due to evaporation and through other ways. Now 26% remaining minus 15% sludge gives us 11% times 7 days equals 77 days worth of water that should be able to take us into October 2015. We accept that our estimates and calculations of the Mislote River flow may be wrong, but the calculations were conservative. On the inflow side of the dam in its current state, the situation also looks very similar from what we have observed on our previous visit. The edge of the water line did not move noticeably, although we know from the published levels that it is coming down. I think I'm coming down with the flu. The water tower that we saw earlier on the hill is visible here again, which implies that the water of the Tongati pipeline is coming in from the left, from the side of that hill. My day is finished. Will I see you there? Hi there, everybody. I go to places and tell stories of what I've seen. I tell them here. Take it on the rocks. Chris on the rocks. Collaboration is the name of the game for any vlogger. Many hours go into this. Give us your inputs and subscribe, please. Subscriptions makes us possible. We fade without them. We bloom and impress with support. Please like my videos and please share it to friends. Soon to follow will be regular postings on ship salvaging coming from my huge stock of video material that I've collected over two years. Many stories to tell. Also about the beauty of the world I live in. 
meditations in nature my style work together this is going to be fun for all of us sometimes opinions as well views of the world it will all be there i want to show you my world as it is and i hope it will be funny as well in time i want to have a one size fits it all channel 